Sup nerds, I'm Tom. We're gonna talk about a little card game called Nessos. Nessos is an extremely simple and quick bluffing game, and it even says on the box here that it's a it's a mini game um, where you put a card in front of somebody and you, you make a claim as to what it is. It, it could either be a number between one and 10, or it could be uh, these green, the bad cards, I don't remember what they're called, um, but, but they're bad and they're green. You can't claim that it is one of these, but you just say a number between one and 10. You can't lie about that number. If you say 10 and it is a 10, you know, Sorry, if you say 10, it has to be a 10. You can't say 10 and it is a 7, but you could say 10 and it is a one of these. So I'm going to slap the card in front of you, boom, and I say it's a 10. So you either take that card and say, I believe it is 10, I'm going to take it, boom, put it in front of me and into my tableau and it's worth 10 points. Or you could say, no, I don't believe it. I don't think it's a 10, so I'm going to pass it back to you and you have to flip it up. In which case, you know, if it's a green, which is pretty much the only thing you're worried about. You're only worried about if it's either, it is either what they say or it is a green. If you get, I think, three greens, then, then you're out. You can say, no, I don't think it's a 10. I think it's a green. I'm going to pass it back to you. Or you could say, I'm going to pass this to another player, but I'm going to add a card to it. I'm going to say, ooh, instead of accepting this 10 that you said, you said it's a 10, I'm going to add this three to it and pass it over to Aaron. So now Aaron has to decide, does he want to pass it back to you, essentially? All right, I'm getting, getting lost in this example here, but you know the, the, the third player has to th decide if they want to pass it back to the second player that passed it to them, or keep it, or pass it off to a fourth player. So keep in mind, player number one, pass it to player number two. Player number two didn't accept it, didn't hand it back. They added a second card and passed it to player number three. Player number three could, in theory, not uh, accept it, not pass, pass it back, and then add a third card to it and pass it to a fourth player. And that person either accepts or passes it back. They can't keep, can't just be bouncing around all over the place. Um, and then they flip up, you know, so that person either accepts it or passes it back to the third player, and they flip it up and resolve, well, whatever we got. That is a relatively clever mechanic. This idea, it's not just do you believe me or don't believe me, it's do you believe me, do you not believe me, or maybe either maybe like you believe me but you want to add your own bad card and hand it to another player or you think i'm lying but instead of passing it back to me you want to pass it off to another player either with adding your bad card or whatever you know so that bluffing aspect is pretty interesting not super interesting but it's kind of interesting and i kind of liked it the only issue is that the cards themselves aren't interesting at all. They're just one through 10 or the bad cards. Now there is a slight little thing where if you have a one, two, and a three, you'll get 10 points, but that's about it. I would have liked this game a lot more if, and you know, maybe they really, really wanted to go for the mini game aspect, but if there was a bit more to the cards and there's a bit more reason why I would believe you or not believe you, because it's still a bit of that stare down, do you believe me or don't you believe me? But yeah, if there was more card counting, more, you know, the cards had special abilities when they flipped up or something, so I have more of a reason to try whether I do or do not believe you, or, you know, there's a little bit more to do with your board state that I could kind of go off of, because in here there's really just a little bit of card counting and, whether, and, and, and you just go by whether, you know, you just stare them down. Like... That can be kind of fun sometimes. You know, I remember uh, Barnyard Roundup did the same thing, and I actually kind of liked Barnyard Roundup. I mean, and I guess maybe I'd rather play Barnyard Roundup over, over this, but it was just like, I just wish there was more. Because, like, it's upsetting because I find that mechanic clever. I find the, it's either you take it, you give it back to me, or you give it to somebody else, and you get to add a card to it. Cool. There, we can work with that system. More stuff can happen there, but it's just the cards are one through ten, or or the little one one two three thing that you get bonus points. Like if I say a ten and I slap it down, I don't know. It's a pretty. You should probably flip that up, right? Ooh, but yeah, I would know that you should probably flip that up. So I'm gonna say ten all the time, and I don't know. The art's real good, the cards are pretty good quality. You have this tiny little wooden first player marker that I guess is nice, but totally not necessary. This one was a bit of a swing and a miss for me. I mean, I like really light card games. I kind of liked Barnyard Roundup. Um, I just don't really see myself playing this again. Uh, 
I would like to see a, a bigger game using this system. Or even, it doesn't have to be that much bigger. It could still be a relatively small game. It could still come in the same box. It could still just be a deck of cards. But I wish that there was just a little bit more because I, it has promise, but it just doesn't deliver yet. Like I always say, rough to suggest that you purchase a game after I just said I didn't really like it, but I will put a link in the description box down below for whatever reason. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored.